above the fold in Richardson today this month. The Eisman Center proudly unveils Stephen Knapp's Seven Muses. On April 13th, the city of Richardson and supporters of the Charles W. Eisman Center celebrated the introduction of this masterwork in light at the Leftwich Grand Foyer. Richardson's first major fine art commission was brought about through the inspiration and efforts of Charles W. Eisman, chair of the Major Gifts Committee, and represents the broad range of possibilities for art at the Eisman as I would walk through the Leftwich Grand Foyer, I would look at that wall up above the ticket office and I'd say, we got to have something there. <laughs> and everybody would say, yeah, we got to have something. But nobody knew what that was. And one day I was over at uh, Jim Von Ayer's house and uh, Jim and Gaylor uh, had uh, commissioned a piece by uh, an eminent uh, artist, uh, Stephen Knapp. And I took one look at that and said, you know, that's what we need. Eisman's enthusiasm was soon matched by the generosity of Jim and Gayla Von Ayer and their passion for the work of artist Stephen Knapp. We got a tour of the Eisman Center when it was still under construction and uh, it's a pretty spectacular place. We've been coming here since it opened and uh, we, we really would like to be part of such a spectacular place. But I couldn't see just making a donation just for some money to have something named after us. I really wanted something spectacular that kind of everybody can delight in. I send Stephen emails periodically telling him that it is still spectacular and is still wow. Every night I see this thing, walk through the living room, see it from various portions in the house, and it's like when you're a little kid you see fireworks for the first time, and when you're 90 years old you see fireworks, what do you say? Wow. Creating that wow is especially of Stephen Knapps. He has an international reputation for large-scale public works of art in such diverse mediums as kiln-formed glass, metal, stone, mosaic, ceramic, and of course, light. Light painting is something that I've been working in and developing over the last decade. It's both a physical presence and an illusion. It's created by taking white light using a coated glass it acts like a super selective prism to break it into multicolors. And using these colored shapes and forms, I create a painting on the wall, which for all the world looks like a painting, until you turn off the light and realize it's just light and glass. What I find both uh, exciting and uh, a little scary about it is the amount of light in the Eisman Center. It's a bright space. And the more I looked at it and the more I saw what happens in this space, the diverse uh, activities in the space, how people use it. I'm quite excited by the fact that this being a light-based artwork will change all the time, much as the Eisman Center itself changes all the time. Seven Muses also changed as the project evolved. Initially, the intention was to purchase a single piece and have it installed on the wall in the Leftwich Grand Foyer, to the right of the opening on the mezzanine level. But that plan quickly changed. We saw this wall and we thought, well, you know, put a piece in the middle, it'll look really good. Stephen comes here and he goes, no, this is a performing art center. It's got a dance across the wall. And when I first came to the center, I looked out here and said, looked at the size wall and said, oh, wow. Then I looked at the wall again and said, oh, wow. <laughs> it's a big wall. I saw that those little ballerinas walk across the floor with their mothers. And then I saw a graduation, high school graduation, I think it was the same day. And this is about promise, it's about opportunity, it's about hopes, visions, dreams, everything I think public art's all about. And it all happens in this hall. The light painting grew from a single piece to a series of six figures dancing across the wall. However, the evolution didn't stop there. When Knapp advanced the technology of his art by discovering how to effectively create gray light, he was inspired to grow the project again. We were getting ready, in fact, we were leaving for Santa Fe to install a big piece uh, last summer, and leaving the next day, and I, real, I figured out how to make gray, and Jim and I had been talking about that, figured it out, so I called Jim and Gala back and said, do you mind to talk to Chuck, you know, talk to Bruce, can I have that wall around the corner too? Because that's what it's all about as an artist. It's about opportunity, and then it's about creating your work. 
and the inspiration to me came from what I was seeing in the Eisman Center. Tonight, you're going to see the Richardson Symphony doing their final performance, their final number last weekend, reflected on this wall. Tomorrow when you come and look at this piece, you may be disappointed. It won't have the brilliance, it won't be fireworks in the sky. You'll see color going through the light. Depending on the time of day, it'll wash a little bit of wash of color. As a storm cloud passes overhead, it'll jump into color, then it'll recede. This mirror is life. And the more I thought about what was happening in here, the more I thought this is the way it should be. I decided I really wanted to let this light play across this wall, reflect the time of day, the seasons, reflect what happens in this hall, in this community, in all of our lives. It's change, it's about possibility, it's about hope, it's about encouragement. And what I wanted to talk about more than anything was inspiration. And I hope this will do it for you. If we can have the house lights lowered, the spotlight dimmed. I'd like to present the seven muses to you. The City of Richardson invites you to visit the Eisman Center to experience for yourself the possibilities and inspiration found in Seven Muses. Above the fold in Richardson today, May 2006.